Hey, what's up? Andrew Kramer here for videocopilot.net and welcome to this very special Halloween video tutorial. Now, you know what makes this tutorial special? Absolutely nothing. It's just like the rest of them. Um, it just happens to be Halloween today and it just happens to be our number 50 tutorial, which is a pretty cool thing in, its, uh, in itself. So I thought maybe we'd take a little time to look back at all the... And eh, never mind, we don't really have time for that. Let's just go ahead and move on. What we're going to be creating is the look of bugs crawling underneath the skin. Now, here's what we're going to be doing. And I really love this shot because he doesn't seem that concerned, even though they're really crawling up his neck. But uh, here's, here's what we're going to be creating. Okay, so bugs crawling up the skin and... Uh, you can see we have some nice uh, displacement here and uh, and look at this face. That's a great face right there. And you know what? I think it, look, oh man, that is just pure terror. Um, okay, let's go and get started. What we're gonna do is take our face.mov and drop it onto a brand new comp. And we just have our raw footage. And then I'm gonna create a new null object because the first thing we need to do is motion track our face. Now, we don't need to do the advanced motion tracking from the demon warp, demon face melt tutorial. We just need to do a quick two point track. So, select the layer, I'll choose, I see window, tracker control. Now, if you can't find your tracker controls, check underneath your mattress. Sometimes when I lose things, they're in my mattress, so good place to start. So I'm going to click track motion and we're going to track position and rotation. So let's pick a couple of points. So I'm going to kind of move in here. This looks like a good spot. We'll go ahead and just uh, increase the search area and the uh, track area and we'll use his left nostril. And these are good places to track because I've already done this tutorial and so I know exactly where to track. So I'm going to go ahead and analyze forward and uh, look at that. Ah. Okay, perfect track. Man, I sure picked those points good. And make sure we click edit target and that we have null to select. And I'm going to choose OK and apply. Am I going a little fast? I'll slow it down a bit. Just uh, really excited about this one. So I'll click apply and we'll apply to X and Y. Okay. So now we have a null object on his forehead which is very impressive on its own. Now the next step is to create our bug. Now we're not going to be creating an actual bug but we will be creating a silhouette of a bug. So I'm going to create a new solid and uh, we'll call this bug layer and uh, white is fine and we can get pretty complicated on this but I think a good bug starts with an oval so we'll just make an oval shaped bug on the uh, white solid with the elliptical mask tool and then I'm gonna hit F I'm gonna feather this out about 10 and then I'm gonna hit T and then we're going to lower the opacity to 50%. Okay, so what we're going to do is animate this bug layer so that it looks like it's crawling on his face. So I'm going to hit P, brings up our position, and I'm going to set a keyframe, and then I'll just, uh, let's see, I'll move, dang it, lousy, doggone. I'm going to go ahead and move it down here below his shirt line, and then I'm going to go up to the end and I'm going to move it up to his hairline which is clearly receding and in no time he will be the guy from let's make a deal or the price is right or deal or no deal that's right and uh, that's a good look so the other thing we want to do here is sort of kind of follow on the contours of his face and what I can do is parent this to the null object so that at least the animation will kind of stick to his face. And then what I'll do is just kind of play with the, uh, the keyframes and kind of follow some of the contours. And 
you know, just give the bug a little bit more life and avoid some of the complicated areas like his eye because uh, that can be tricky. And if I just don't go there, I won't have to worry about it. Okay, so I'm going to just push this beyond his hair even more there. So right now we just have the bug crawling up his face. Perfect. Now I'm going to right click on the footage, choose transform. All right. Right click, transform, auto orient, and choose orient along path. And what that's going to do is make the layer sort of follow the direction of the path. So if you look right here, it kind of rotates to follow the path. The only difference is it's sort of offset. So if you hit R, we can rotate it back on track. And then you'll see that it kind of follows the contours pretty nicely. So I'm just kind of. OK, so there's our bug crawling up the skin. Now the next step is to pre-compose this. So we'll select the bug layer and the null object and choose layer pre-compose. And we're going to move that into a new comp. And this is our bug mat. And I'll choose OK. So the technique we're going to take a look at today is sort of a procedural way of creating things underneath the skin, you know, with sort of a displacement. And we can add a bunch more bugs into that comp and make it look like they're crawling all over his face. But we're going to start out with just the one. And then I'll go ahead and shut the layer off. I'm going to go to my effects and presets. And we're going to type in glass. And there's a great plugin called CC Glass. And it comes on your After Effects install DVD in Psycore Effects. Um, it should come with CS3. So what I'm going to do is take that and apply it to my face. And wow, we get this crazy wild thing. This effect, I think we've used it before, and it creates kind of a cool organic look. Um, wow, that is impressive. But what we're going to do is click on the Surface tab in the Effects Controls, and we're going to change the Bump Map to our Bug Mat. Aha! Uh -huh. So now we're sort of getting somewhere. Not perfect, but somewhere. And we want to change the property to Alpha. And that way it kind of follows the uh, transparency that we have inside of the Bug Mat. Now, we can go ahead and set this up a little bit. So what I'll do is, let's see, we can bring the height down. The trick here is just kind of playing with the settings to get what you're looking for. You're going to have a completely different shot and you're going to have to try to match these settings. So I, I suggest you kind of play with it. Here we have a light source, which I guess is over here to the left. And it looks, it's like a sunset, I think. Um, and so we just have a little bit of shadow on this side and it's pretty soft. So there's no real harsh shadows, but we do want to kind of keep the light source in that direction. So I'll go and play with some of the settings here. I'm going to bring the softness down because we already have the softness in our transparency of our bug mat layer. And for the displacement, we'll bring that down to maybe 25. We don't want it to be too bubbly. So 25 looks good. And then the light, we want to change the direction of the light to match our scene. So kind of up and to the left looks pretty good. And then we can change the height of the light. So as you can see, we sort of create a much more realistic you know, direction. Now, you're going to notice that we're losing brightness on the image. But don't worry about that. Just try to get the lighting to look correct. And once you do, then we can go to the shading controls and we can increase the ambient light or the diffuse light to rebrighten your image. Now, this little hot spot, little highlight there is called a specular. And that sort of makes things look like plastic or glass. So we're going to bring that down. But we want a little bit. So if I bring it up, it looks too shiny. So what we can do is increase the roughness. And that'll sort of smooth it out. And then we can bring the specular down. And so 
that way we just create sort of a little bit of a highlight. Now I'm going to bring the height down just a little bit and let's see. You can bring the light intensity too, so that you can kind of dim the shadow and then just bring the ambient light back up. So right away we're we're creating some some pretty interesting effects. So you can see the bug kind of crawling up the skin and looks pretty good. Um, but there's a lot we're gonna do to sort of enhance this effect. So first thing I notice our bug is underneath the shirt and while this is probably more realistic I wanna show you how to obscure it um, so that you don't run into that problem and what you're gonna do is come into the bug layer so we alt double click and that's gonna bring the comp up that has our uh, mat and the other thing we'll do is we'll copy the face edit copy and paste it into this comp just so that we can see what we're looking at. And then what you're gonna do is create a new solid. Um, doesn't matter what color. We'll bring the opacity down. And I'm just gonna sort of draw a shape with the pen tool around the shirt. And then also around his hair. And then we'll go ahead and draw the uh, graduation and maybe a horn just for good measure. Um, okay, uh, we don't really need to do all that, but basically you want to draw a shape around the area you want to obscure. And then we're going to parent it to the null. And so now that mask is going to sort of stay connected and then change the transfer mode let's see transfer mode to silhouette alpha and what that does is cuts everything out underneath this layer let's see so when that bug gets down here you're gonna see it sort of disappears now the reason why this is such a powerful technique is because this layer moves and you can't animate masks as well as you wish you could and so what you sometimes want to use is a track mat instead but by using the silhouette alpha you don't have to track mat a bunch of layers together and if you understand what that means great if not don't worry about it the bottom line is we can use this one layer to basically cut all of the uh, pixels outside of the area that we don't want. Anyway, back to the face comp. So now you can see it sort of obscures itself and you can um, feather these masks out as well. Let's see. If you make a lot of unnecessary masks, it's hard to see kind of which mask you want to focus on. So right here we sort of have what we're after. Now like I said, there's some other advanced things we're going to do, and we should just jump right into them. So one thing is color correction. The shadow here is kind of gray, and the shadow here on a real person is sort of red, is sort of skin color. So we need to color correct our bump to sort of match that. So what we can do is create an adjustment layer, and then we're going to take our bug mat and duplicate it. Now the great thing about this is we're using the same composition for all of our effects and so that if we change this composition it will update for all of our effects. So what I'll do is take the adjustment layer and put it beneath the bug layer and then I'll choose effect, color correction, curves or better yet effect, color correction, color balance. So color balance allows us to you know change the color. now. Right now we're colorizing the entire thing with this adjustment layer. But if we set the track mat to the alpha mat of this layer, you can see that we're only color correcting that area now. One problem is this layer is semi-transparent. So what we'll do is choose effect color correction curves and we'll go to the alpha channel and we'll boost it so that 
our color correction will be stronger and it'll work better. So I'll go ahead and reset it and then we'll go ahead and play with it. So our shadow should be more reddish. So we'll go to the red balance and maybe we'll increase that a little bit. Um, you know, you just kind of want to go through and, and maybe play with some of the settings here. And then you also want to go and you know make sure your other settings are, are adjusted. And then we can also add just a regular you know brightness, you know dim it out um, or whatever. So just kind of pull back, you know, scrub through it, make sure that the color correction is looking right. And if it's not, just uh, you know make some make some adjustments until you have you know kind of what you're looking for. So. Here it's still getting a little bright, so I'll go back to the shading and we'll bring the specular down to like five. So that's looking really good now. And the other thing we want to do is maybe add a soft shadow. Now this is a little trickier, but definitely a necessary uh, part of this composition. So again, I'm going to duplicate our mat, which is our layer, and I'm going to choose Effect, let's see, Generate Fill. And I'll fill it with black. So now we sort of have a shadow. And then I'll choose Effect Fast Blur. And so now I've added this all to just this single layer. And then I'm going to duplicate the layer. And then I'm going to set the bottom layer to Track Matte Alpha Inverted Matte. So instead of using the alpha of the layer above it, use the inverse of it. So then if I take this layer here and move it over to the right, you can basically see that it gets hidden by that area. But what we want to do is just kind of bring it down and then blur it out a little bit. And maybe move it over. And then change the transfer mode to overlay. Maybe bring the opacity down a little bit. Um, so the idea here is just we want to kind of create just a soft, a soft shadow, and and that looks pretty good. Also, if we take our adjustment layer and our mat that has our color correction, we can put that on top, and that way our color correction is above above everything here. So, okay, so we're making some progress, and the next step is to sort of make it seem like the displacement is pushing the bump over to the left because his face is sort of not square towards the camera. So as much as this is a two-dimensional effect, we want to sort of cheat it so that the bump sort of protrudes out that way. So to do this is a little trickier. And uh, I'm going to duplicate the mat. And uh, I can, let's see here, we'll call this the color correction mat. This one is the shadow mat. And this one is the displacement map. But the displacement map doesn't work by itself. I need to do something to it first. So what I'm going to do is choose layer pre-compose and move that into a new comp. And then I'm going to alt double click on it. So same displacement map right in a new comp. And I'm going to create a gray solid. So I'm going to choose the color and we're going to do Let's see, 126, 126, 126. So kind of a middle gray. And OK, OK. Put this beneath our displacement. And then I'll bring the opacity up by, or the alpha up by going to a curves adjustment and boosting the alpha. So that's pretty good. I'll go ahead and close that. And now back in our main comp, we have our displacement map on top. Now the reason you have to pre-compose it is because the displacement doesn't see effects, it only sees um, a comp. So anyway, let's create an adjustment layer and then I'm going to choose Effect Distort Displacement Map. And then for the displacement map I'm going to choose our displacement map comp. So let me go in here and I'll set these values to 0. 
we're going to use the luminance because we set this up so that middle gray doesn't affect anything. So if I were to increase my displacement, the middle gray wouldn't do anything essentially. And that's because it's made to only affect the bright areas or the dark areas. Anyway, the point is you want to use that gray so that it doesn't affect the layer. So now we are only affecting that area and look what we're doing. We can sort of push this in the direction that we want, almost like it's 3D. Now you see we're getting this tearing and that's because the displacement ends right there. But what if we could sort of cheat and move the displacement over sort of to kind of make this work better? Well. If we alt double click on this, we can sort of move this to the right. And I'm going to use the arrows and just kind of click it to the right a couple times, so like three or four. And now if I increase the displacement, you see it blends a lot better. And you know, we can we can cheat that even more. Or bring it over in the other direction. Let's see. Depending on what you need to do. So in this case, we actually want to go in that direction because we want to make this push out more to the left. So we'll move the displacement to the left. Maybe there. Now, the other thing you want to do is just, just be careful. You don't want to do it too much. But that way it just kind of pushes it over. And the other thing is these uh, these bugs, maybe they're heavy. And so one thing I did was I kind of made them slouch downwards as if they were sort of, uh, you know, like hanging on his skin. So kind of a negative value sort of creates that effect. And, you know, the more things you can do to make this effect better, you know, you know the more realistic it's going to look. And, uh, you know, so right there, Looks pretty good. Looks like he's got a jelly bean crawling up his skin. Um, perfect. You know, Sam actually does acting. I don't know if you guys uh, know that, but uh, he's been on you know a few different uh, shows. He's on the show Twenty Four, and before that, he actually did commercials for Claricel, which is an acne medication here, and uh, you know very effective, obviously, because Sam's all cleared up. Okay. So, as you can see, our, uh, our, uh, our bug is kind of crawling up the skin and, you know, we can go and make more adjustments to that layer. So, this is sort of the gist of this effect and, you know, there's a lot of power in this effect. You know, you don't have to do bugs. You could do worms. You could do veins. Anything that's supposed to look like it's extruding off of the skin is things that you can do. And then, all you need to do. so. Let's let's kind of look at this. Um, we've used the same original mat for everything we've done, the color correction, the shadow, all that. So if I alt double click on the bug mat, this layer, I can take my bug layer and duplicate it and say move it over. So if I hit P, if you set your mouse over a keyframe and then select the position parameter, you can move stuff and then you won't have to uh, redo all the animation. So, so I'm just going to kind of offset some of these bugs. And you can add a wiggle expression, but you can animate them yourself. But this is the idea. You could basically change that displacement map comp. You know, put whatever you want in here. And it'll automatically update in your final comp. And everything's all tracked in. And everything works well. So. Here's kind of a good example of why that displacement map is good because you see that kind of makes it seem like it goes over his hair, which makes it seem more three dimensional. Anyway, I hope you guys found this tutorial useful and uh, you know, I didn't mean to take it on to so many steps, but I really wanted to show you some, some cool compositing tricks. And I uh, hope you guys have fun with this technique and we will see you next time. And of course, be sure to check out the blog. We have a lot of great information. There's a great photo of me uh, dressed up as Indiana Jones. Can't go wrong there. Um, we got uh, information about new products and all that good stuff. And speaking of products, be sure to check out the product page and uh, say thanks by uh, picking up a great DVD. And, uh, you know, we really appreciate it. It really helps us do our thing. So. 
Take care, everyone, and happy Halloween or happy costume day to those of you who are not corrupted by Western civilization. Okay, guys, we'll see you next time. I'm Andrew Kramer for videocopilot.net.